Hey everybody, Lucas here. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at TickTick -tick and see how well it can work for us as a tool to practice the getting things done methodology or GTD for short. And this is a video I'm especially excited about because TickTick -tick is a tool that I didn't have that high expectations of. It's not a tool that's necessarily made for GTD out of the box, but because I found it so easy to use, I think it just works great. And I'm just excited to show you all, so let's just dive in and I'll show you why. So we are presented here in a interface that I've customized a bit, which you can do to your liking under settings. So I'm actually going to start there because I feel like this really represents what TickTick -tick is about in many ways. It is a very flexible system and you can make it work in any way you wish. So this is the settings module for the desktop application that I'm looking at here, but you'll find the web version to be very similar. Uh, one of the things you can change, for example, is the layout. So I prefer dark mode, but you can shift easily between any colors and you just start seeing it response very quickly without any lag. And that's a recurring theme for this software, which is very important for a productivity software that you want to be easy to use. So let's shift back to the dark theme and move into some of the features that TickTick -Tick has to offer before we dive into the lists and the whole system we've created. For one, there are smart lists, uh, which is a list of pre-made uh, uh, lists, I suppose, uh, that can consist of a specific collection of items. I've chosen to hide most of these smart lists because I want to keep it simple and minimal, but you can certainly choose any of these. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory, right? To show or don't show in your particular system. So I did want to make sure that was visible uh, for you all to be aware of before you try it. They also have a focus timer, which allows you to truly, you know, focus on a task uh, and engage with it based on the time you've allotted for it, which can be super handy if you have a task that might require some more time or just no distractions. Uh, and there's even a Pomodoro timer, which is a specific time management method, uh, which aligns with GTD. Uh, you know, it's independent of it, you could say, uh, where you work with small breaks in between. Really worth a try and the way TickTick -tick has set this up is very elegant, I must say. So there's other uh, settings that I'm not gonna go into in too much detail, but it was just to show you that there are many options to customize this software to your liking. I suppose one thing that is really noteworthy is the ability to have widgets, which allows you to position, for example, your inbox directly on your uh, desktop background. Uh, and, and immediately enter items in there without even having to open the application, which is pretty rare uh, and it works really well. I've tried it uh, with this trial account and it works. So that's noteworthy. Same for templates, which aren't necessarily special, but it's good to have them. And uh, so you can see that it is a very flexible system from the get-go. Here are the options that I am left with in this particular uh, design, what I've chosen to use. It starts with the inbox, uh, which is great to have available out of the box. We don't have to create it separately. Adding an item is super easy. You press enter and it's in there, available to process later on. The way to process items is by using tags primarily. Now here you can see that I've created a bunch of them, one of which is to indicate a next action. So if an item gets this tag, it's an item that we can perform from a particular context. The context I've created for this demo system you can see here. You can create your own and I make sure to always color code these by what they are so that I can keep an overview so that I can remain organized in my system. In this case, all contexts are light blue. Time uh, required uh, is uh, organized in a uh, orange fashion. Uh, agendas, and I'll get into this in a moment uh, with an example, are colored light green and any reference material is sort of this green yellowish color but you can pick any color you like you can add new tags and select a color for those you can even have parent tags so for even more organization i could do this create a context like main category and then i could group these contexts under there you know by having the context tag as the parent tag so that is all up to you uh, you can do that 
and to process a particular item from the inbox that's exactly what we're going to use so let's say this is a next action just for illustration purposes we can use the hashtag and then anything we've created already shows up or we can create a new one if that applies then we want to select the context let's imagine this is an errand we got to run we can select the errands context and let's imagine it takes 30 minutes so we select that tag as well and then we can move it from the inbox to any of these lists that we have available. Now, actionable items go into either the standalone actions list, which I've created, if they're not related to a project, or if they are, we can select the project they're associated with. For now, let's just add it to the standalone actions list. Now, this is great and all, but uh, how do we get an overview of every action, whether it's related to a project or standalone actions? That's where the custom module comes into play, which allows us to create smart lists of our own. This is super powerful. I really like this feature. I really like that uh, uh, you know, uh, Trello has this as well and some other uh, tools that I've reviewed on this channel. This is really something that can make your system so much more powerful because it just has this ability to customize it to your liking. In this case, I kept it simple and I created the office, laptop, and errands lists. And you might wonder, well, that is just already what we had here with tags, right? Well, not exactly, because this uh, filters for items that are both next actions, as well as uh, next actions that can be performed from the particular uh, context that we've set up. So that is the uh, main difference. You can set up those tags uh, here under the conditions for the smart list. In this case, we want it to be both next actions and errands, and that's the items that will show up. You can get even more granular and advanced under the advanced tab if you wish. So that is really great uh, to see, and this will allow you to see items that are part of this context, as well as the next action, regardless of project they're related to. In fact, you can see that the standalone actions and product items are grouped separately, so you can even expand or collapse them if you want to work on a particular project first within a context. You can also sort for specific things like uh, the dates it was added or to be done by title, by tag, or by priority, uh, which it also has built in as a kind of uh, taxonomy for tasks. Uh, you can set these up under the settings module and uh, you can even add sub tags, uh, sub tasks, I should say, uh, although I'm not doing that in this particular example. Uh, priority can be set at the top right. So just really straightforward, uh, easy to use uh, and very pleasant to use, I can also imagine, for a GTD -er like myself. Now we see our item that we've created for, uh, from the inbox. It's now moved to the standalone actions list. So here we can get a more high level view of the uh, project level uh, and how we're progressing there. This is just a standard list though. What about projects that might be more complex, right? They have different phases perhaps or sequential items. How do we make those work from a uh, GTD perspective? How do we keep the overview? Let's take a look at an example project. So you can actually create folders and group specific projects in those folders, which is super handy. You might want to do that for areas of focus that you've defined or any other type of categorization, really. In this case, uh, we're imagining that we are a manager at, a, at our work and we have an intern to manage and it's time to evaluate their performance. So it's time for a performance review. Now let's imagine that with this company there are specific protocols to follow for the performance review and actions to be completed by both myself as well as others. Uh, and that uh, really comes in handy here because that means we can see next actions, we can see sequential actions, waiting for items, agendas and others. So I think this is a really nice way to illustrate what TickTick can do for you. In this case, we're using sections, which we can do with uh, these uh, lists. Um, and we break up the project into specific phases uh, with these sections. So in this case, I have two parts related to preparation and execution phase, and then three parts related to processing, which all follow up. In other words, every action from the previous phase has to be completed before we can start with the next phase. Obviously, the first phase is how we start. That is why these items have been predefined as next actions with their context and also the time they will take uh, uh, already predefined. Uh, we can open these items from the smart lists we've created here, but just for sake of illustration, let's imagine that we have completed all of these three items. We can mark it. And it's done. And now we are ready to tackle the items in 
part two. In this case though, uh, all of these items include things we would be waiting for from our intern. So that is why if you haven't done so, now is the time to add the waiting for tag. And uh, if you wanna get an overview of everything you're waiting for, you just navigate to that very tag and you'll see it from there as well, right? So that way you can see both from the project level as well as the tag level, what it is that you're waiting for to stay on top of everything. So let's imagine that we've received the answers that we were looking for from our intern to prepare for the review. And we've also managed to schedule a time. Then we move on to execution, conduct the performance review. And what you see here is that we have defined the context. We've also defined the time required for it, but we've not yet mapped it as a next action, which is exactly what was intended, right? This is part of a phase that comes after previous phases, so it wouldn't have made sense to have it live as a next action already. Now, however, that we are done with the previous phases, we can add the next action stack very easily as such, and now it will show up when we select the Office Smart List, uh, as you can see here. So really easy to do uh, and uh, very intuitive, I would say, as well as quick uh, to see uh, on the, you know, on, on the desktop or whatever screen you're using it. It doesn't take long time to load and that's very important. So now we've completed the performance review. We can mark that complete and then we move on to the next phase by adding the tag, so on and so forth, right? So I think and hope that you'll start to see how this actually works out. Um, and you can create multiple custom tags for these purposes as well. Like what if I work with my intern very intensively and I wait for multiple things from them, I could create a waiting for intern special like custom list here and make sure that it takes items that are both uh, labeled with the intern label as well as the waiting for label. So you can get really creative here. Use it to fit with your life essentially. Then we move on to the tickler file, which is pretty straightforward. We can just create a new task list called tickler file, which I've done, set up a reminder, uh, give it a due date, and then set the reminder uh, on the right bottom corner here, and then uh, make sure that the reminder is set up. It's actually at the top right here, sorry, not the bottom right. Uh, and we can select the reminder to show up on any specific time. Usually it will be on the date if you set already, but it doesn't have to be. For some, they maybe it's even more simple because essentially this is just a deferred inbox, right? Items that you wanna process at a later time. So you can just dump them all in here, but you can certainly also create a, a folder like here and group specific categories of some day maybes. Uh, maybe, you know, trips to take, like a trip to Mars, why not? Uh, as well as maybe restaurants you wanna eat at, whatever's relevant to you, you can create these specific lists. And if you're ready to process them, you can move them into the specific list that you've set up that are actionable. Areas of focus is where you can start to see for the first time a different type of list, which is a note list. So you can have both task lists, which we've seen so far, but also note lists that allow you to most basically you know, store information. Not everything is actionable in GTD and, and that's totally fine. In this case, we wanna have a definition to reflect and review what are our areas of focus in our lives. So let's imagine we have a family, then we can define the details in the description uh, and revisit it at any particular time if needed. Maybe if we change our job or anything else change in our life, right? Our areas of focus are relatively constant, but they do change uh, uh, as our lives progress. So here's where you can revisit those. For goals, that is where I decided to actually move back into the task view, because at some point you have, you know, you want to complete these goals. It, they might take a while, uh, but you know, and they're not next action, certainly not, but you do want to define the goals uh, uh, in a clear and achievable way. Here's what I uh, use the sub uh, lists, uh, sorry, sub tasks for. In this case, let's say my, with my company, I have an objective to hire 10 new interns by July 1st. So I can mark that as the main objective while having sub objectives, sub tasks for any individual intern. And I might wanna link to specific projects related to hiring that intern uh, in the description. Uh, so, you know, just use it in a way that works for you. But I found it really uh, pleasant to set up a goal in this software as well. 
Moving on with uh, the vision, which is like areas of focus, just a area where you define something to revisit regularly, as well as your life purpose, which is a pretty big thing, but you can certainly store that information here. Speaking of storing information, the same counts for reference, which honestly is also possible very well with TickTick because you are able to upload attachments. So here I've uploaded my picture as an example. Uh, you can upload uh, attachments from the specific item itself. You can tag those items. I chose the ID tag here just for illustrations. It is to do with my ID, I suppose. Uh, but you can store passwords, whatever it is, honestly, right? It's all about storing information in a way that works for you. So I would recommend grouping those in the reference uh, list or even reference folder with separate lists and using tags to reference uh, and, and easily find items that belong to a specific reference area. So all in all, uh, I'm super, super impressed with what TickTick has created here because it it's not explicitly created for GTD, but as you can see, it is very easy to make it GTD friendly. And uh, so friendly, in fact, that in my honest opinion, it beats out on some uh, pieces of software that have been created for GTD. So super excited about using this tool. I highly recommend you give it a try if you're still looking for a system of your own. Uh, link will be in the description if you want to try it out. Subscribe if you want to see more GTD related content. And as always, thanks for watching.